Hey guys, welcome back to Games of War. Back with a new episode today, focusing on great shoot 'em ups, shooters, shmups if you're the cool kids, on the Sega Genesis. Now, the shoot 'em up genre exploded in popularity back in the early 90s, and the Sega Genesis was a fantastic choice if you were into those kinds of games. The system's faster clock speed allowed for tons of bullets and enemies on screen, and there were some really good games in the genre on the system. Now myself, I wasn't huge into shoot 'em ups back in the heyday. It wasn't until mid 90s that I started really getting into the genre. Now early on when they were releasing every other month a new shooter was hitting, I thought they were kind of a one trick pony. You know, you played one, you played them all. That was just surface looking for me though. I never really got into them and got into the stories and examined the game's systems at work. So when I did get into a few shooters, I became hooked and I was a full fledged shmup junkie. So let's take a look at some of my favorite shmups on the console. Thanks for watching guys and I hope you enjoy. Starting things off, we're going to go with the renovation line of shooters on the Genesis. And chances are, if you were a fan back in the early days of the Genesis of shoot 'em ups the name renovation had a lot of weight behind it. I think it started off as like the Wolf Team and then renovation and now it's like the Tales of Team. So that's some pretty interesting history. Could be different order, but I'm pretty sure that's the way it went. Now the renovation stamp meant you were getting a quality shooter and we're going to take a look at three of these games here as they are shmups. The other games are kind of more action shooter games. So starting things off with Arrow Flash. Arrow Flash was one of the first shooters I got for the Genesis and it really opened up my eyes as to what was really going on in these games. Now I thought shoot them up so you just put the game in, grab the controller, shoot a bunch of enemies, get to the boss, rinse and repeat to the end of the game. However, these games from Renovation all had really cool storylines. Uh, most of them open up with a nice cutscene. Then you can also grab this. You guys remember these? These are instruction manuals. They used to come in games and have helpful information inside. Now the backstory in this game is that it's the late 30th century and there's a Viking horde going around and just wiping out solar systems, killing off entire races of people on planets, led by this great Hilagi. Now, Dr. Keen on Earth is a really good scientist that knows what's going on. He's been monitoring these Vikings, seeing the, all the chaos they've been causing. He runs some experiments. Unfortunately, he botches one of them, and it draws attention to these Vikings to Earth from outer space. Now, fearful that these guys are going to attack, he contacts his granddaughter and hands her off the key code to the Chameleon XRZ-75, I think it's called. This is a prototype badass spaceship that's able to transform from ship into like a mechanoid. And she's able to take control of this thing. Sure enough, the Vikings come, they kill the doctor, and it's up to you to save the world. You'll notice right away this game looks amazing. There's some great parallax scrolling going on. And the gameplay hook of this is the aforementioned ability to transform from a ship into the mechanoid. Now the ship has got your standard shots, you're able to di pick up different power-ups and shields, all different kinds of cool weapons going on in this game. You've got a charge shot that you can use very strategically. This is like a five missile firing barrage of, of attack that you can wipe out enemies with. On top of picking up your favorite power-ups and choosing what you like best, you can control the ship speed which is very useful in maneuvering around the board. Sometimes you want to be able to go fast, sometimes you want to go slow for you know, not too jerky of movement. You shooter fans know what I'm talking about, right? right? Uh, when you transform, this is a really cool thing. You go into this other form, which has a whole new set of moves. Uh, this mechanoid, you are able to charge up your shot. Instead of like firing five different missiles going this way, you've got like this shield that envelops you, and you can smash into ships, kill them that way. You become invincible for basically a few seconds. It's a really cool way of strategy, like switching back between the forms for which situation suits best. On top of all the power-ups, the graphics look great, uh, the music is great. Uh, this is what I was talking about with story. I, I really wanted to save the Earth. I wanted to kill off these Vikings, horde bad guys. I wanted to wipe out their leader, the Great Halagi, and I wanted to avenge my great-grandfather. I was all really interesting. I thought the levels were really well done. Some really nice variety going on in between. And I just thought the game had great music and just a really good time, really good fun shooter on the Genesis. Uh, if you're into shoot 'em ups, definitely check out Arrow Flash. I think it's well worth it. Next up, we have Whip Rush, and this is another shoot 'em up released by Renovation very early on in the Genesis's life. And I tell you guys, back then in the early '90s, it was such a great time to be a fan of these shooters. 
it seemed like every three months or so another awesome shooter was being released on the system and Whip Rush remains one of my personal favorites. Now the story set up in this one is kind of similar to the rest. Earth has used up all of its natural resources and can no longer sustain itself properly. So three Alpha ships have been sent out to do some recon in neighboring solar systems to kind of gather resources, minerals, harvest them and send them back to Earth. Now everything would be going fine up until they got to the planet Voltagius. Then all of a sudden the transmissions abruptly stopped. Uh, years went by, no contact from these ships. Uh, one day a transmission was received from three ships, very similar to the Alpha ones that disappeared earlier. However, these had alien technology in them. And upon closer inspection, these were the same ships that disappeared, now coveted in alien technology and formed together to make kind of an alien base that was invading Earth. And basically the Earth was in deep shit. However, one pilot piloting the said whip rush is here to save the day and our game begins. Upon taking control of the whip rush, you'll notice right away this game has several layers of parallax scrolling, which has always been a specialty of the Genesis. A nice fast clock speed enables all kinds of multi-layered uh, scrolling effects that look really good. A really nice enemy and ship design that kind of have a cartoony look to them, but it, it's still a very serious game, but I really like the art style of the enemies in this game. Now, besides your standard firing weapon, you can also pick up lasers, missiles, and fireballs. Now, the lasers are able to power up immensely powerful. Each of these weapons can be powered up three times each. So, your standard lasers will get more powerful as you collect power-ups. You can power up your missiles, which aren't quite as powerful as the lasers, but they do have some limited homing abilities, which is very helpful. The third power level on those are, are really helpful in taking out the enemies. And then the fireball, you're able to power it up so it can shoot 360 degrees around the ship which can mean life or death in some situations. And then always, strategy is really important in this game. Which weapons for which situation is best suited. Uh, you can control your speed of your ship once again for ease of maneuverability in between enemies, dodging fire and such. The boss battles are all really great in Whip Rush. It's got a great soundtrack. Another excellent shooter that kind of flew under the radar, no pun intended, uh, during the Genesis' heyday of shooters, getting overshadowed by titles like Gary's and Musha. Those were the heavy hitters. Games like Whip Rush and Arrow Flash kind of sunk below the radar, which is unfortunate because this game is one of my favorite shooters and definitely a high recommendation on the Genesis. Felios is like a breath of fresh air. In a sea of science fiction, outer space themed shooters, Felios is a Greek mythology inspired shooter where you play as the mighty Apollo on the back of a mighty Pegasus. Now your object in this game is to save the moon goddess Artemis who has been taken captive by the evil ruler Typhon. Now this game uses Greek mythology and settings to provide its stages. Everything is very colorful and the things you fight in here are a refreshing change of pace from you know, uh, spaceships and, and giant space metal enemies. In this you're fighting monsters of ancient Greece, you're fighting Medusa, you're fighting dragons, sirens, all kinds of fresh innovative ideas, especially for the time when most games that came out were science fiction, spaceship themed, uh, this stood out from the pack. Gameplay wise, it is very similar to the science fiction space themed shooters. However, in this, instead of using a ship with a gun, you have got a sword. And this sword can be charged up and fired from. Uh, the charge shots are very powerful, able to clear the screen. You can collect different power ups for your sword, all ways to damage the enemy. A very fresh and much needed take on the shooter genre. Felios plays great, it looks great, the colors are very bright and vibrant, in stark contrast to like the dark black desolate space theme. Uh, this is a real nice game, great music, very unique stages, a welcome change of pace, and another great shooter on the Genesis. Now we're getting into the heavy hitters. This is Gary's Gyrus. I've heard multiple pronunciations for this game. This was one of the early Genesis games, once again from Renovation, to use 8 meg power as it proclaims proudly on the box. What this meant was this is a damn good looking shooter on the Genesis. Tons of layers of parallax scrolling, some screen filling bosses. This shooter was the real deal and it is blisteringly difficult. I remember around stage 5 is when the difficulty really kicks into high gear and starts kicking my ass. This is a tough shooter, but it is a very enjoyable one nonetheless. Uh, the story is pretty heavy in this game. There's multiple characters you introduce to. 
Uh, we've got an Earth that is once again being overrun by pollution and toxicity. And there is a star cluster Lizalet that kind of monitors over the entire solar system. And they warn the people of Earth that unless they can clean up this planet, there is a enemy known as Gulfer that is coming to use all this pollution and toxic material to build super weapons. Unless they can stop Gulfer, they are going to have to blow up the Earth, killing everyone. If they can stop Gulfer, they promise to give the people of Earth a brand new planet to start anew. Now they send a consort by the name of Alexis down to Earth to kind of start negotiations. Now this Alexis kind of befriends this guy Dan Dare who has stepped up to the challenge to single-handedly take on these Gulfer enemies. Now the names are kind of strange, you know, Star, Council, Lizalith, uh, Dan Dare. It's all pretty comical stuff, but the story takes itself deadly serious. So as Alexis gets here, she makes some modification to Dan Dare's ship installing the TOZ system and this is an awesome gameplay mechanic in Garas that is just tons of fun to use. Now in addition to your weapons and sub weapons you have this TOZ kind of tracker and this tracker follows your ship. You are able to launch this out into other enemy ships. It kind of leeches onto the ship and drains, scans and takes their power and gives it to your ship so you can latch onto multiple enemies each having different shots and, and attacks and use them into your own blueprints of your ship. And this is an awesome mechanic. If you see an enemy firing at you with a pretty tough weapon, just send up the TOZ, leech onto there, leech the weapon and pull it back for your ship. And if you leech off the same enemy up to three times, you can power that weapon up to three times for some devastating effects. This is a really cool gameplay mechanic. It adds for quite a bit of depth uh, using the, the TOZ to leech onto different enemies, stealing their skill sets, using it for your own powering up to different levels. Some of the best graphics I had seen in the shooter on the Genesis up to that point. Uh, some great music in this game. The parallax scrolling is amazing with multiple layers. This is a hardcore shooter. One of the best for renovation and one of the best shooters in the system in my opinion. Maybe second only to Musha. It's a tough call. This is an excellent shooter. If you're a fan of the genre, you owe it to yourself to have Garys in your collection. This one will kick your ass and you'll enjoy every minute of it. Next we get into the heavy hitters, quite possibly my favorite shooters ever made and the best that I've played to this day. We've got Musha and the follow up on the Sega CD, my personal favorite, Robo Alest. Now Musha, which stands for Metallic Uniframe Super Hybrid Armor, that's a mouthful. Now these Musha suits were originally designed for doing construction work out in outer space. Once again, we find ourselves in the future, the year 2290. Humans have spread through space and made colonies everywhere. They are called Lagrange points, which are situated on different planets, moons, and space stations. Now there is this Lagrange point called Lagrange point Gamma, which has a supercomputer in use there called Dyer 51. Now this supercomputer was built by all the top scientists and it was used to help further colonize people out into outer space. However, this supercomputer has become too smart for its own good and it has turned on the human race vowing to destroy. It is up to the humans to use this special prototype Musha armor to fight back. Right away Musha impresses with some brilliant graphics on the Genesis. There's so much going on on the screen at once with not a hint of slowdown. The weapons are awesome. The graphics look insane. An excellent soundtrack. This game has kind of become a legend over time. The price has skyrocketed on eBay. And I don't know what specifically this can be attributed to. I know it is a damn fine game and one of the best that I've played. But the prices it's going to are just quite insane. It plays like every other shooter, just taken to the max. You've got awesome power-ups. You're able to collect these power-ups and they're leveled up to four times depending on if you collect the power-up of the same kind. Uh, levels 1 through 4 all have different effects, different shot variations. And if you collect a different power-up, It'll change over to that new weapon, but stay at the same level, which makes for a really nice, addicting power-up system. And if you get hit once with this power-up, you lose your weapon, but it still stays at that level. So if you click another power-up, you're right back at that level. And you also collect these options, which can be spread around the ship in different formations, such as uh, three-way, you know, surrounding the ship, all different kinds of formation options. If you get hit, you lose these. You get hit again, you die. So the object in Musha is do not die. Losing all of your weapons and formations can be very hard to get back into the rhythm and flow and get back your powers. 
So just basically don't die in Musha. It's a classic shoot 'em up. It plays beautifully. I'm completely in love with this game still to this day, and I've been playing it for probably a decade. Uh, it is that good. It's got staying power, and it is one of the best shooters on the Genesis. Now, the sequel kind of breaks my heart. Actually, not a sequel, a follow-up. Robo Alest on the Sega CD is what the Sega CD should have been. It should have been a supercharged Genesis. None of this full motion video crap, and I love full motion video games, but I see how they were the downfall of the system. If you ask anybody that knows of the Sega CD, they're going to say, oh, Genesis ports and full motion video games. Well, here, my friends, Robo Alest is a testament to the power of the Sega CD and what it should have been. The game now has opening animated cinemas. We've got voice work, however cheesy it may be. I don't care, it's still there and I love it. We've got amazing soundtracks. That is what the Sega CD should have brought to the Genesis as an add-on was just as great 2D experiences, maybe a little bit supercharged, looking a little bit better. I'm not expecting miracles, but excellent supercharged Genesis graphics with great opening cinemas, great ending cinemas, maybe cinemas in between the levels, hell, whatever. Just give me a solid 2D game with beautiful music. Don't go trying to change a genre and all this full motion crap. Don't try to make these interactive button pressing games. The Sega CD should have been a supercharged Genesis. And that's what this game here, Robo Lest, is. That's what the next game I'm going to talk about, Android Assault, is. And that's what a handful of few other games are that were built for the Sega CD from the ground up, not trying to rewrite the book or try all these new experiences that the system wasn't ready for. Robo Alest is very much like Musha in the fact that it contains the same power-up system, uh, the same gameplay elements, but this one has the feudal Japan influence in its storyline, characters, music, and setting. It is just as good as Musha. Some think it's better, some think Musha's better. Myself, I prefer Robo Alest. If you're looking for a solid shooter, Hell, an original game built for the Sega CD from the ground up. Robo Alest is your answer. It's a fantastic shooter and a worthy follow-up to Musha. Next up, we have another favorite shooter of mine on the Sega CD. This is Android Assault, The Revenge of Bariarm. And this is yet another example of what the Sega CD should have been from the beginning. Great new experiences built from the ground up for the system. Not trying to venture off into uncharted territory with full motion video on button pressing games. Just a solid 2D game with enhanced graphics, a beautiful soundtrack, and some great scaling effects. Everything is in this game. The story is in the year 2192, once again in the future. The Zayas army has created powerful GEO machines that have been just decimating Earth's forces. Earth is hanging on by a very small thread. They've been developing a secret weapon secretly while losing these battles called Bari Arm, and now it is complete and it is time to take the fight back to the Zayas. Now this is a shooter where you have a transformable ship. The Bari arm is alive and can transform from ship into a robot form. And both of these forms are very powerful and used for different situations. Uh, the robot has got some awesome attacks, some screen clearing special attacks. The weapon system allows for powered up weapons. You guys know the drill by now, collect one power up and build upon that to multiple levels to make it more powerful. Uh, the graphics in this game look great with all kinds of parallax scrolling. One of the best soundtracks in a shooter. Uh, levels all have nice, diverse designs. Being able to transform between the ship and the robot is awesome, as are the special attacks associated with each form. This is a top-notch shooter and one not to be missed on the Sega CD. It is that good. And the challenge is just right in this game. It's not overly difficult. If you are new to shooters or you have a lot of trouble with some of the more difficult shooters, then Android Assault or Revenge of Bari Arm is for you. A very good game, and if you have a Sega CD and like shooters, you must own this game. It's that simple. A great addition. Next, we've got some honorable mentions on the Sega CD that I just wanted to mention briefly due to time constraints. I don't want this video to be hours long. Uh, Silphied was one of the early games on the Sega CD that really pushed the system. This is early Polygon work on the Sega CD that at the time, no system could even come close to doing. It's an amazing looking game for the system. And it really showed people that the Sega CD could do a lot of things if properly programmed for, which is the problem that Sega never took the time to really push the system. Uh, this is a shooter that uses like full motion streaming in the background to give the illusion of polygonal graphics. It looks great in motion. It's a very challenging shooter, and it's a must-own if you want to see what the Sega CD can do. Uh, Visual-wise, sound is great, uh, very challenging, nice variety in stages. 
Soulstar is by Core Design. These guys really pushed the Sega CD. They made multiple exclusives for the system that used it some advanced scaling and rotation that put, like say, the Super Nintendo's abilities, the Mode 7 to shame. Uh, really advanced stuff going on here. This is a pretty enjoyable shooter that switches up gameplay styles from level to level. Uh, great science fiction shooter nonetheless. Koei Flight Squadron is one of those games that has just gone through the roof in price. It's a very different kind of game than what we're used to seeing. It's a very anime inspired, uh, very cutesy looking game. You play as a bunny suit wearing individual flying on the back of a dragon. The story is told in really funny animated cutscenes that look great on the system. A real light-hearted score plays in the background. And this is just a great shooter with a lot of charm and personality. Uh, definitely one to maybe play a ROM of. I don't, I don't know, it's very expensive. A Soul Feast came packaged with the Sega CD and this game blew my socks off right in the first night of owning the system. An amazing soundtrack, tons of challenge. The graphics were great. This is an excellent shooter, very fast paced moving. Uh, great enemy design, great level design. This is a great shooter and a must have for all Sega CD fans. To finish up on the Genesis, I've got a few honorable mentions that I don't sadly have enough time to go over these. I mean, this video could go on forever and ever and we'd never leave our computers and we'd watch Games of War all day, but that's just not gonna happen. Uh, on the Genesis side, closing things out, Thunder Force is a series that's been around since the early days of the Genesis. Uh, there's a sequel, Lightning Force, which is, in my opinion, one of the best shooters on the system as well. Uh, great graphics on Lightning Force, man. These are some of the best on the Genesis. The parallax scrolling is amazing. The weapon system is all great. You can choose your levels from the start in which order you want to do them. Uh, if you're looking for a great series of shooters, definitely check out the Thunder Force slash Lightning Force series of games. They're top-notch shooters involving vertical and horizontal stages. Then we've got Sagia, which is a spin-off of the Darius series of games. And these are very unique shooters that are on multiple systems. And all the enemies are kind of mechanized fish. Uh, it's a very unique approach to enemies, and it's really strange, but once you start playing the game, you forget all about fighting flying fish and just enjoy one hell of a good shooter. These are some great shooters that you could not go wrong on the Genesis with. I hope you guys have enjoyed taking a look at my favorite shoot 'em up games for the Sega Genesis and Sega CD. There's so many great games to choose from on the console. Many I didn't even include, like my dumbass forgetting Lords of Thunder. Whoops. Uh, a great genre, very well represented on these Sega systems. Hope you guys have got some good ideas from this video. Thank you for watching. As always, Games of War is nothing without you.